Caddis Maximus here, this time with a Swiss Army Knife style uh, flathead compact pocket screwdriver. This is made by Shelton Tools. Surprisingly enough, uh, Shelton had a kind of a ratcheting version, but it also had cast aluminum or cast zinc body. It was a bit looser. This is one of the early, I should say, original of the uh, Shelton Tool Versa Tools, sometimes they're called. They did have versions that had a Phillips head instead of the four slot heads, but that version seems to be slightly cheapified, and that was always kind of the deal, is that Shelton just kind of made basic tools, or a little bit cheaper tools, but they initially started out with these, uh, which were much better. The newer ones also have a rivet, which is difficult to adjust and actually can get loose. I was reading on some forums, so the original ones actually have this cross count. The screw where one screw screws into another, kind of like pocket knives. Anyway, this original style here, non-ratcheting, actually is pretty decent. It has this very interesting plum-colored acetate handle. I believe it's acetate. It may be Bakelite. And this steel body, really nice knurling. Pretty short, as a matter of fact. In the pocket, you're looking at something that's right around four and a quarter inches. And then if we take... For instance, the, with the screwdriver extended, we're still at uh, right around five and an eighth inches. So pretty short. And so that's just the deal is it has four actually pretty uh, well stepped. I, I really like the, the what they've done here with these blades. They are all ground. They appear to be made of some pretty nice steel to tell you the truth. But I do like that they, it's actually four distinct sizes. Sometimes you get sets of screwdrivers where the difference between the smallest and the biggest ones aren't quite as even, but this is four nice little steps. Anyway, you just might flip it around, pull out the deal, and since this whole thing is broached in D with the whole stack and everything fits tightly, you wouldn't really want to use it in it uh, like this. It would still push in. One thing I'd like to mention is you can just see right there the spring that's inside. That's what provides the tension from it falling out, so that will always work. It's not some kind of other mechanism where it can uh, wear and then get loose. That spring will always provide a nice constant amount of te uh, tension. Anyway, you just flip the blade out and use it like a normal screwdriver. Versus complete stubbies, or actual stubby slot heads, this is a nice kind of middle ground. May, you know, just being a little over 5 inches long with the blade. But you just have this nice handle here. And then to tell you the truth, all this knurling, you really get just a nice purchase on it. And what I thought was surprisingly cool and made this versatile is that you can turn it 90 degrees and be able to actually break a fastener. Uh, and I think that's pretty versatile, being able to do that, bust a fastener, or even be able to get into a, a tight, uh, tighter space. Because now this is much shorter than a stubby, and uh, you still can get plenty of torque. And I don't know if this is just happenstance, but when you kind of flip it up like this, that notch kind of locks in so it doesn't want to push in. So now you can use it kind of at an angle like this where it's much more ergonomic. Sorry about that odd cut there. <laughs> I fumbled the camera. Anyway, so I thought that was kind of neat the way that notch just kind of worked out so that you could have it just slightly tilted and be able to get that extra leverage and just have a lot of finger clearance. And then, of course, being able to fold it away and put it away. Or, excuse me, not have these sharp screwdriver tips kind of poking you in your pocket. This is kind of a thing that, you know, maybe... I, janitor or just kind of a general purpose uh you know maintenance apartment maintenance person or something might have just because it's small convenient you can get uh, a lot of torque on screws has a variety of sizes and is actually built pretty well i really do like that design the way it's all set up with the uh <laughs> let's see if i can't get one blade out the way it just sits in there it's surprisingly when it's retracted is really pretty robust and these blades are pretty thick. If you were to use this as a pry tool, you really wouldn't want to go this way. You'd probably want to try to go this way just so it has a little bit more uh, structure. Or you could just use a different, uh, this next size smaller blade. You wouldn't really use this for too much prying, but a lot of times slot head screwdrivers are used for prying and that's what damages them. And the way this is set up, these blades are actually held pretty well. Um, this thing actually feels <laughs> more than righteous righteously solid so anyway that was kind of the deal i think this was a innovative idea for a tool and versus their kind of later not quite as well made uh versions this 
early one with all the steels actually was a pretty good first shot. I really do like it in the way you can tighten up or even replace this cross pin here if you need to. And uh, good machining tolerances. So everything is pretty well, uh, pretty tight and pretty well put together and pretty easy to use and, and versatile. So that's kind of my deal with the Shelton. Even has a real nice, you know, super deep main USA patent pending type of thing. And then just the basic Shelton tools. And digging around, there's actually another one other YouTube video about the newer version that has the Phillips, and they show the patent in 1952, and that's what they're showing in this. So this this one in particular may actually be one of the early 1950s uh, original tools because it seems pretty close to uh, what the patent was describing and, and the drawings that it had in it. So it's kind of neat to find something like that. Because many times companies will issue a patent for a tool, but once they actually get around to mass manufacturing, uh, there's a variety of different changes that are made This once they get to that uh, point of actually producing them. And this one, it seems like the handle may be a little bit different, but everything else is actually identical to the patent. So I think that's kind of neat and kind of wish there were more innovative tools like this that actually are well thought out and actually work reasonably well in practice. I think the only real weak spot is if you're trying to break a screw and have it extended, you know, you're going to put a lot of stress on these rods and all that type of thing where when you have it pressed down and together in this position, then this blade's kind of just being all reinforced by the body. So that would be the only weak spot. But didn't want to spend a few minutes talking about it just because I thought, wow, that's actually a, for a slot head screwdriver, that's pretty much everything you need in one compact, uh, <laughs> easy to use unit. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody who's been watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Till next time, Caddis Maximus out.